we both loved the original, or I don't want to say the original, the reinstallment of Halloween, just called Halloween. We both loved it. I think we both saw it multiple times in theaters. Mm -hmm. We're very excited about the direction of the where this was going. Immediately brought da back down to earth with Halloween Kills, which I think we can both agree fucking horrible terrible movie. terrible movie um and like it was a weird experience because it was like during covid it was released straight to peacock i want to say so it didn't feel like a, like a real movie you know it like felt like a bad movie yeah it, i mean that didn't help either but like i was willing to like kind of just write that movie off completely and like if they landed the plane with this third one, I would have been like, okay, great job doing this uh, this like renewal of Michael Myers and Halloween. But I got to say, the third one, a big disappointment for me. I liked this movie. Most people did not like this movie because the this movie focuses on Haddonfield and an ostracized young man, Corey Cunningham, who becomes the protege of Michael Myers. And in a vacuum, I like that. And this movie, as just a Blumhouse horror movie, is a solid Blumhouse horror movie that I walked away from saying, well, that fucking rocked. I laughed. I did this and everything. But most people, understandably so, cannot reconcile that the final movie of this trilogy and something that's supposed to conclude the Michael Myers story focuses on somebody else more than Michael Myers. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel about it. It's just like this movie would have been awesome had it been number two. In 100%. The, in the, uh, if, this, if we had just completely scrapped Halloween Kills, moved this to the second one, had a different ending, and then focused on Michael Myers, I like the idea of exploring Haddonfield in like a post-Michael Myers world and kind of like seeing how the town would eat itself with without Michael Myers even killing people. Uh, I think that's an interesting dynamic to explore. I don't want to see it in the third installment. I think that Corey was like a fine I enough good. character. I did fucking absolutely love the opening scene of, of uh, this movie, of Halloween Ends. The opening scene is awesome. It's extremely dark. It's extremely like whoa, fuck, what am I in for? And so, like, after this, the, like, once the, 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 uh, the, the title scene, the title credits kicked in, I was like, oh, shit, okay, this Buckle is gonna up. be awesome. Most yeah. devastating opening scene to a movie since Midsommar, I think. Yeah, that's totally fair. That was, that's a really good, uh, that's a really good comparison. So, I don't have a problem with less Michael Myers, and using less Michael Myers, you didn't know it as it was happening, led to so many good and smart moments. In the first 35 minutes of this movie, you have a babysitting scene and a party scene and neither have Michael Myers. And after the party scene, I was like, yo, this movie fucking rocks because now I've now had two scenes where I've been like, Jesus, and I'm just like fucking white knuckling it, looking at all the, like, they're watching Halloween movies, they're doing this, and it doesn't fucking come. And it's like your heart's just fucking beating. You realize as you're seeing it, and Michael Myers is in this movie. He teams up with uh, Corey, and they do stuff together. Uh, but it's like a weird dynamic even when he is in it, and he's like kind of weak, and it's like the first time that we've ever seen Michael Myers like this weak and like yeah. frail, and it's a weird experience. But this fucking ends with the fucking battle royale, and that showdown is just super disappointing and just kind of lame yeah. and short. The biggest, the most interesting part and the most sus suspenseful part of the final act is between Corey and Lori. Like, that's way more interesting when that, that Lori is... basically baits Corey and traps him. Like, that stuff, very good. All I mean, all of, like, the good battles that are in this movie are with Corey taking, assuming, like, the role of Michael Myers. Yeah. Again, that that works if then a bigger, better thing is coming with Michael, where mm -hmm. Michael's like, hey, let me fucking show you how it's done, kid. You know how Michael Myers talks. And then there's the big <laughs> fucking ending. Instead, he's you fucking don't get washed, that. dude. Like, he's the most washed. I mean, he's famously been lit extremely on fire. But Halloween that's like kills. the lore of Michael Myers is that, like, he takes all this fucking damage and somehow 
never dies. Like he he came back strong. He got lit on fire, came back in Halloween Kills, got jumped by the entire town, and still like was stronger than all of them. So it doesn't make any fucking sense why all of a sudden he's just like this weak, frail old man. Lori is writing a memoir, which is just the worst and really lame. Although it did lead to this incredible tweet. Were you a Sex in the City guy? No, not really. I wish that Nora were here for this. Uh, there's a tweet from Tom Zohar with pictures of Lori writing, and it said, Oh, I did And see as that, I yeah. faced up against Michael for the 507th time, I couldn't help but wonder, will I end Halloween, or will Halloween <laughs> end me? Which is basically I under, every yeah. Sex in the City <laughs> yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that's pretty good. Um, I, while we're talking about funny stuff, the fact that Corey is not the son of Richard Kind is Good call. unbelievable. He has the exact same face. And you know how many people on earth have the exact same face as Richard Kind? That one kid. One. Yeah. <laughs> it's him. <laughs> uh, Lori says, Lori's a little unhinged in this movie. She says, it makes you want to rip off your shirt and show grief your fucking tits. And I'm like, again, like theoretically in this in this franchise, you've only been terrorized twice. You're not like a fucking celebrity, Lori. Relax. No, but she spent her entire life preparing to be terrorized yeah and that's sort of like the theme of the first half yeah, of this he movie killed her daughter true yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah just that small little detail Fine. also i mean like when you were talking about the the fact that they had the babysitting scene and the party scene and, and michael myers didn't show up and you were still on edge i think that lends to like experiencing life in a post michael myers world where it's like you're constantly on edge waiting for him to happen and it does do some like psychological warfare and like him not showing up doesn't mean that he's still not like felt yeah and that so they do a good job of giving that to the viewer because obviously Haddonfield is doing that with how they treated Corey uh C Corey is involved in a tragedy and he's then ostracized because everyone's like oh evil because mm -hmm. fucking Michael Myers terrorized that town and it's it's like exploring like well is he evil because the town made him that way or is he evil because he just has it in him? Pete, it's a classic nature versus nurture. That's right. Will Patton is sort of in this movie. We stand late era Will Pat Blumhouse Will Patton. But he he uh, does not appear to be of a, a law enforcement figure anymore. He's just a horny old man who is dying to star in the Cialis commercials. Yeah, he really wants to strip Laurie. Corey lures Officer Mullaney, Allison Stalker, into Michael Myers, Myers' lair, props him up, and says to Michael, teach me. <laughs> I wish the first words that Michael Myers spoke were, no, I, you pretty much did the hard part. <laughs> Seems like you got it, pal. Now you, now you stab him. <laughs> you asking, teach me how to stab somebody? I love my mom, but the way I am when my mom's like, hey, how do I do this thing on my phone? And I know it's an intuitive thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, here's how you do it. I promise, try. <laughs> because you'll because it's very intuitive. And then when, like when you feel your way you'll through it, it out. you know how to do it. And then you won't. It's like you raised me. You were you'll yeah. You out. remember it easier if you do it yourself and everything. So I wish Michael Myers said that to Corey. Okay. He was like, oh, this is my protege. Well, I've got my, he like breaks the fourth wall. He's like, I've got my work cut out for me, <laughs> don't I, kids? There's not like a ton of interesting side character shit that happens in this one one that i did appreciate was uh allison's character does not get the promotion that she wants at work yeah and it's because her boss is fucking one of the co-workers mm -hmm. and then they both get murdered that's one of like the fun like ooh, i hope these people die yeah so they've done a great job with allison this whole series she is a fucking idiot in this movie yeah. how does she not know so somebody is now killing everybody in Haddonfield, except everybody is somebody uh, who like slighted Allison. <laughs> people who work with Allison slighted her, and the people who are being mean to Corey, <laughs> the kids who. So they're they're Corey's got some bullies. He uh, kills the fuck out of them. Oh yeah, and then he kills and fucks up their car. Yes, even worse. Uh, <laughs> he uh, kills Allison's coworkers, and he kills the radio DJ. Who upsets Allison? Mm -hmm. Allison live on at air. No point kills him live on air. Yeah, and that song was good. Yeah. Allison at no point is like, we got some bad luck, don't we, kiddo? <laughs> this is a fucking coincidence. <laughs> what a coinky dink! A lot of breaking the fourth wall in this movie. I didn't dislike this movie. I don't think that it was a piece of shit. I, um, I think 
it's probably the most, my worst, my least favorite movie where it's like, okay, there's some things that they did well, but it wasn't fully fleshed out and they fucked up to a sort of irreparable degree. Second favorite of these, this trilogy? Still put Halloween Kills worst or yes, oh yeah. I mean, I could see if if you were very disappointed in this movie, I could see how like the stakes were higher. So you could say even if no. this is a like, do you agree this is a this is like a a likable Blumhouse movie? If it's not, yeah. The, if, if there's another one coming, I'm it, this movie is not going to deter my interest of the third movie. If you hadn't seen Halloween Kills and you didn't know this was kind of a Rocky trilogy, if this was the second one that you'd seen coming off of the 2018 Halloween, you would be like, I'd be this ecstatic for the third one. Fucking it's rocks. back. <laughs>